Um, this is logged in on November 25th, 2023, Eastern Standard Time. Um, sensitive material has been breached and it is now in front of the public. This is very sensitive documentation and the world will be in total chaos if leaked and it is now leaked. All of it. Not one document, all of it. Place of exploitation, forbidden knowledge, television. This must be stopped. Welcome to the 2023 Forbidden Knowledge Conscious Awards, live from Miami. Are you ready? Please welcome to the... Hey everyone, I'm Elizabeth Carson and I'm thrilled to introduce to you an extraordinary weekend event happening right here in Miami, Florida on August 3rd and 4th. It's none other than the second annual Forbidden Conscious Awards weekend. After the tremendous success of last year's event with over 1,200 attendees from around the globe, we knew we had to make this year's event even more spectacular. On Saturday, we have a captivating conference lined up featuring world-renowned speakers such as Muhammad Ibrahim, Merkaba 13, Robert Grant, Billy Carson, and a woman's panel hosted by yours truly. Following the conference, we'll set sail for a VIP yacht cruise at sunset, where you'll have the chance to mingle with your favorite nominees and celebrity guests, all hosted by 19 Keys. Sunday, August 4th, kicks off with a Forbidden Knowledge book publishing signing event, followed by the highly anticipated second annual Forbidden Conscious Awards. This is a red carpet affair, so come dressed to impress. Remember last year, we surprised a lucky guest with an Audi A4 during the awards, and this year, we're upping the ante with a chance to win a Mercedes Benz. So make sure you secure your tickets early. This event is sure to sell out quickly. I cannot wait to see each and every one of you there for what promises to be an unforgettable weekend of education, inspiration, celebration, and glamour. Hey, 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 welcome. Hey. Welcome to this pop-up podcast on this beautiful Tuesday late afternoon. My name is Elizabeth Carson, and today I have a very special guest. I know that you guys like the last interview that I did or that Nikki did. Mm -hmm. She interviewed me about maybe three, four weeks ago, and you guys liked it. So I appreciate it. And of course, I want to have her back on my podcast because not only is this my girl, but she is a wealth of information. She is a licensed therapist. And I'll just let you talk about yourself. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, hi guys. Yes. My name is Nikki. I'm a licensed therapist. I've been a therapist since 2012. I'm also a life coach and a meditation teacher. So I'm all about health and wellness and finding ways to heal that are outside of just, you know, taking me medication, prescriptions and things like that. So I am so excited about being on the podcast again and sharing some tips and tools that I've learned and that I share with other people that I work with too. So thank you for having me. Yes. Well, quickly. <laughs> and she's my girl too. So, okay. you know, she yes. helps me. <laughs> <laughs> quickly, let's talk about the industry. So you said something really interesting to me today because I was like, should I put my kid in therapy, right? Right. And you immediately, and I'm talking to Instagram too, you guys. So don't mind me if I'm looking over this way too, but right. Um, you told me like, don't do that because they will do what? Give you a label. Um, anytime a therapist has someone in their office, we are, we have to give some type of diagnosis. And I am a proponent of trying everything that you can with your children prior to, 
um, taking them to therapy to get that diagnosis, unless you know that they actually need it. So sometimes situations come up as you're raising your children and you may question whether or not they need therapy because of some of their behavior and actions. But really, you just want to try, you know, different things. Talk mm -hmm. to them. Communication is so key. So many times we talk at our kids. Yes. We don't talk to them. So talking to them and seeing where their head is at, sometimes it's just Going Necessary. through hormones, you yes. know, just kind of going through things. So, yes. And kids don't come in the world knowing exactly what to say and how Thank to say you. it. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Exactly. So it's like we have to tell them and share that with them. So you know, I thought that time. was so interesting. You said that you have to diagnose. Yes. So in the industry, yes. guys, right, the, the, the industry that I speak against, because I'm just I'm, I'm so. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> yes. They diagnose you. These right. people and school will teach you to have your kids sitting down in a classroom for six to eight hours a day. Mm -hmm. Stop moving. Don't talk. Sit down. Shut up. But don't do drugs because drugs right. are bad. Although you need some Adderall because you can't pay attention because you can't right. sit still. I mean, right. what type of backwards message right. are we and that's a very common diagnosis, ADHD. Um, I mean, usually that's the first one yeah. that you give a, a child without even children watching them for and a year, think two about years. It. Yeah. Think about it. A child is full of what? Energy. Excitement, energy, Excitement. optimism. <laughs> and, and we tell these kids, no, you got to sit down and shut up and listen. Mm -hmm. Even though that's the last thing that a young child wants to do. They can't. They're they can. full of energy. You're still trying to manage Thank you. all of this, right? Yes. And trying to figure it all out. <laughs> yes. So that was just a little side piece right there. I just wanted to touch on that. I thought that yeah. was very interesting that you have to go in with a diagnosis. I just, yeah, it's just sad the world that we live in, but that's why we're here talking about mm -hmm. it, trying to make some little, you know, changes. So um, yeah, I thought that was really interesting. Just yeah. coming from a professional standpoint of the industry that, you know, is so abusive. And right. I will call them abusive. Our, the industry is abusive. Right. Because how are you going to put a child on a narcotic? Like, right away. You know, unless you, I mean, you've tried everything that you can because there's sometimes it's needed. But like my mom, she came to me with my niece and was concerned about her. And she was like, okay, she needs a therapist. I wanted to get a diagnosis or what have you. And I said, mom, she's nine years old. Like, give it some time. You yeah. know, and her thing is that she was just, hyperactive yeah you know so she was bored you know sometimes also when kids are hyperactive it's they're bored the content doesn't challenge them enough so yes. they're finishing real quick or they decide not to do it because it's too easy so i would say try all the different things you know talk to counselors talk to friends talk to whoever their aunts uncles grandparents and mm -hmm. you know let it be the last resort to put them on medication yes because once you start it as we all know you start taking that medication it becomes a lifestyle it becomes you know. a lifestyle, not only a lifestyle, but it also becomes habitual. And mm -hmm. then it shows and it teaches that child that, hey, when you're feeling like a certain way, just pop this pill and it's going to be all better. Right. So it's backwards programming. It never, Western medicine never addresses the root of the issue. They address the symptom. Right. Which never gets to the root. We have right. to solve what the root is. We cannot just cover things over with band-aids and think that right. everything is going to be better. Thank you, Billy. Right. right. Hey. <laughs> um, Thank you for your support. <laughs> yes. So, you know, you have to get to the root of these issues. Yeah. Western medicine does not address the root. That's why I have strayed away. And I'm not telling you if you're shot, you know, and you're bleeding out, go to the hospital. Okay. Right. Go to the hospital. But for other reasons, I mean, try to get to the root of these issues, which they'll never. And there's even even people who have worked in the industry that have come out and said they've quit the industry because they will never go to the root of the problem. Because when people are healthy, they don't get paid. Right. There's no money in healthy right. people. Right. There's only money in people that are sick. Right. So they will never promote or find ways to really enhance and, and bring someone back to health. Right. They will keep you between sick and healthy so you can keep on coming and paying them for all of these medications that you got to take. And I also right. heard a different stat the other day. Most Americans are on five different prescription drugs a that. day, a day, a day. Do you yeah. know how many people are in the U.S.? I Just think it's around. Function. Just a function. Yeah. Adults, 300 million, I think, were around wow. in, in, in the U.S. Right. 300 million people. And on average, people are on five different medications per day. Do you know how rich 
Oh, yeah. Do you know that one of my prescription drugs? <laughs> look, look. So I get migraines, okay? I get migraines. And my prescription medicine for migraines, because no insurance, costs, guess how much? Guess how much 200. for 12 pills? 12 pills. 200. Fourteen hundred dollars. Oh wow! For twelve pills. Yeah. I mean, this is this that's is craziness. Yeah. It's craziness, and that's the reason that I kind of pulled back from the profession. You know, I'm doing more life coaching and meditation teaching, and of course, working with you guys because mm -hmm. it's like you know, it's too much. You know, it's constantly rehearsing the stories and different things that people have experienced. And it, be, it can become overwhelming because as therapists, mm. we go through things too, right? Because we're human, right? So it's like, yeah, it's too much. And then on top of that, you're, like I said, you're diagnosing every single person that comes in. And I know I have to say to myself, as I share this diagnosis with this person, they're going to have this label and carry it as long as they feel that they need to, Ugh. which can sometimes be their life, mm. their entire life, you know? And sometimes things are situational. Yeah. You know, it could be you're going through a divorce and your child is anxious, you're anxious, whatever the case may be. So do you need medication for the rest of your life because of mm. that? Um, I don't think so. No. But, you know, it just depends. It's circumstantial and situational. It depends on the person. Yes. And everybody's different. Absolutely. Everybody's different. Absolutely. So you can't put them in a box and say, okay, this is your medication. No, no. This works for majority, so it's going to work for you. We don't right. know that. Exactly. You know, it's a lot of trial and error. And on top of that, 80% um, of the time, depression medication does not work. 80% yeah. of the time. Yeah. It doesn't do anything. So you're changing around your brain chemicals, mm -hmm. your neurochemicals, right. because you're on a prescription because you think that you need something to feel better. Right. When really you might just need some sunlight. I was just about to say, get in nature. You might you know? just need Meditate. some vitamin D. You know, if you're low in vitamin D, that's a big reason why yes. depression, depression. So it's like, we need to start as a community addressing the roots of issues, not only with, with health, but everything, right. all of it. If holistic you have approaches. holistic, yes, holistic yeah. approaches right. and to find the root of these issues, find the root of issues within yourself, right? Mentally, spiritually, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and physically. That right. is how you elevate. Yeah. And then sometimes it can be overwhelming because we have a whole list of things that we need to work on. Mm -hmm. And so then I find that people turn to medication because it's like, oh, it's too much. I'm just going to go and, and do the, you know, a different route, yeah. which is going to hopefully, like you said, put a bandaid on it. But take it one at a time, like give yourself grace. You didn't get this way overnight. Right. You know, a lot of different traumatic situations and experiences probably happened up to that point. So one at a time. Start working on it. One at a time. Yeah. I like that. One issue at a time. Exactly. You know? That's what I talk about. Don't overwhelm yourself with all these different things. I always say micro changes create macro outcomes. I love that. Don't overwhelm yourself. When when I talk, I'm like, you should do this and this and this and this and this <laughs> and this and this. And I'd be She's all excited. She's so wealth and knowledge. I'm like, what? <laughs> no, I, I, mean, I, I get so excited about things. And so mm -hmm. I just blub it all out. But then I revert and, mm -hmm. and tell people, okay, just just do one thing for now. Just mm -hmm. get up and start writing. That's mm -hmm. it. Just implement one mm -hmm. thing. Do that for two weeks. And when you get comfortable and that becomes a habit, then add on the next thing. Then right. add on the next thing. So you don't overwhelm yourself because in the long run, even if you only stuck to writing, guess what? That micro change right. in your daily process will create a macro outcome. And you'll look and back and be like, oh, too. yes, yeah. consistency. Being consistent. Absolutely. But that's what I love about our friendship too is because, you know, I'm book, you know, I have all this book knowledge, right? But then mm. it's like, oh my gosh, all these other things are out here that I didn't even know. And so when I met you initially, you were telling me so many different things. I could try biohacking and things to just regulate my central nervous system that I hadn't learned anywhere in school. And yeah. I was like, oh my God. And it was working, yeah, you know, immediately faster than all these other strategies that know? they teach you in school yes. because they don't teach you in school how to heal people. Because again, reverting back to Western medicine. They don't right. want you to be healthy because there's no money in healthy. So they want to keep you between sick and healthy. So that's what they teach. So it's not even the therapist's fault, guys. It's not even the doctor's mm -hmm. fault. They are literally conditioned to believe that these ways are the ways and these ways are the ways that, that work. Right. But it's right. like, it doesn't, right? So it's us. It's us that need to wake up and realize mm -hmm. that we have the power to change our reality. And I like what you said. If it's just writing be consistent with that. Yes. That one thing and keep doing that. Try it for 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, and then see what happens and see if you see a shift. Yes. Because we're, we're after the shifts. The change is a slight micro 
changes, changes that we end up with the macro outcome. And so, yeah, I would say just start with whatever. And, you know, sometimes I find too, Liz, that a lot of these issues that our kids are showing up with, it leads to self-sabotage as an adult. Yes. Because when we were talking the other day, a lot of times it was childhood. You know, I know with me not being raised by my birth father, you know, he basically left us when I was three. Mm -hmm. And then I reconnected with him when I was 15. And so that kind of in my mind was like, oh, you know, the lie that we tell ourselves, right? I'm not good enough. Mm -hmm. And the rejection and all those kind of things. And so I bought into that for a very long time. And I started looking back. Now I can look back and see how I self-sabotaged myself with this and relationships, friendships, you know, jobs, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff because of the lack of love for myself. Yes. You know, even and as a therapist, that's why I say, no, there's no therapist on here that in this world that's perfect. You know, we all have. Oh, we all have perfect. things. And why do people, you. why do people in the first the place want to even get into therapy as a career? Right. I wanted to get into therapy. Do why? You know because I wanted to help myself right. because I was not okay. So a lot of therapists out here, they want to learn how to help themselves exactly. and then they help other people by the strategies they learn. But right. in a lot of instances, I mean, all of these people like are people that are diving into something because they are lacking some way, shape or form. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that's why, that's why you're drawn to yes. that because you yes. know that you can eventually heal yourself yes. and then heal others too. Exactly. The words that you say. So you said something and it's so important. Self-sabotage created by childhood things that happen, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. I want to, I want to touch on that a little bit. So self-sabotage when you got your dad just left you at three, right? Right. So now at three years old, put yourself there, put yourself okay. at three years old. And as a child, how does that feel to you? What do you feel like? I can actually remember a time where I, um, I was with him and it was when he left mm. and I felt so alone. Like I can picture the room. I can picture him saying, I'm out of here. You know, all of that wow. as a three year old, which is amazing. I and that. so that, to me, it felt so empty. It mm -hmm. felt like I'm not good enough. I'm not loved. Uh -huh. I'm not wanted mm -hmm. by, you know, males. the only people that right males. Right, yeah. And right. the person that's supposed to love you. What are the only people? Me. Yeah. And then to find out when I was older that he raised his own, his other children. See, that's a double and, whammy. Yeah. And so I was like, OK, well, what's what's wrong with me? You that's know? a double whammy. And so um, but I reconnected with him later in life. And I asked him that question before he passed away. Mm -hmm. Rest in peace, dad. But. Um, I asked him, I said, I don't understand because by that time I was a parent guys and I just knew how important it was for me to be there and be present in my kid's life. And he said that he basically looked at my stepfather and felt like he was a better choice because of his lifestyle mm. and things that he had going on. That gave so me chills. I respected him for that. And it gave me so much peace and closure because yeah. I thought that's Empathy. love. Empathy. That's love because yeah. I thought. This man looked at his situation and could see that mm -hmm. she's better off without me. Yeah. So, you know, and I think that's the case in a lot of, you know, with parents that don't raise their kids. So, so many different things you just touched on <laughs> that I want to go deep with. So let's revert back to you as a three-year-old. You're feeling abandoned, alone, yes. abandoned by males, just by yourself. So right. when you are young, you are conditioned, right? Mm -hmm. From zero to seven years old, plus ancestral stuff, your condition. So your conditioning was, I uh, love is mm -hmm. abandonment. Right. Men don't want me. Right. I'm not going to get taken. I'm not safe. That's right. what love was to you. That's right. what was taught to you. Absolutely. What love was. So for you as an adult, did you find yourself self-sabotaging self relationships because you are more comfortable and you might, this might be unconscious. Mm -hmm. We self-sabotage to control the outcome. Woo! You said that the other day. Yes. When you said that. <laughs> we we yes. self-sabotage to control the outcome Ooh. so that we know what's going to happen because the unknown is so scary. So, part. so because you were taught that love is abandonment and treated, being treated like shit and just people leaving you. That's what others. you're going to attract because that's what is familiar to you. Right. So what is familiar to you is going to be more comfortable for you. And that's going to be what you know. So that's what you're going to create in your life. Right. Whether it be toxic or not toxic. So you were taught love in a toxic way. Right. So for you to control things and to be able to feel comfortable within whatever it was mm -hmm. that you were doing, unconscious or conscious, right. you self-sabotage to control that outcome. 
Absolutely. Which we all do, you guys. Absolutely. It was so profound when you said that because I was like, wow, you know, I had always thought that I was trying to protect myself. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, well, I feel like the relationship that is protecting is kinda, yourself. Right. But right. in a toxic way. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yes. I'm like, okay, well, I see that they're they don't like me anymore. They don't love me anymore. And with friendships too. Mm -hmm. You know, I wasn't the best friend. And I realized that. And that's, you know, I was thinking about like a way to have a visual for you guys. And I was thinking about the mirror, right? Mm -hmm. When we look at a mirror, we look at ourselves. We see the reflection back in ourselves. Yes. And I did not take the time when I was younger to do that. Now I'm like, yeah. You know, I can look at the mirror and see that, yeah, I was doing that to control the situation because at the bottom line, I did not want to get hurt again. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. Fear. So you run, unknown. you run before they run. Absolutely. Let me shut this door and let me pack my bags. Let me get out of here because yes. it's looking like it's going to go sour. And it's not anything I'm proud of, but I know I'm not alone. Yeah. I've talked oh, to girl. thousands of people. Right. So I know that this is something like you said. That I'm, a I'm a ghoster. I'm a ghoster. Yeah, I ghost. I right. used to ghost before my right. my lovely relationship with my husband. <laughs> you said <the> lovely relationship. <laughs> my lovely relationship. Yeah. But no, <laughs> your abundant husband. To, <laughs> I used to ghost people yeah. because it's the same like you. We have a very similar story, you guys. Very mm -hmm. similar. I was adopted, given away at birth. What I knew love to be was abandonment. That's mm -hmm. less love for me. Right. So, I mean, I would create these situations and where that type of abandonment would start happening, right, to freak me out because that's what I was attracting. That's what I was comfortable in. You always attract mm -hmm. what you're comfortable in, what, not really even right. what you want. Until you heal, you don't attract what you want. Right. You attract what you are. Right. What you are. The mirror to yourself. <laughs> yes. So what I knew was abandonment. I would attract relationships where I would feel like I was getting abandoned. And then in turn, I would self-sabotage that relationship because I would want to control the outcome before they abandon me while I'm abandoning your ass. So. Right. Right. <laughs> I mean, first one out of here, buddy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Exactly. So yeah. this is like, this is, this is so Real interesting stuff. stuff that happens to us at three, four, five, six, seven. I mean, it's still affecting us as adults. Right. decades later decades right. later so we have to figure out how to get outside of that how to grow from the self-sabotage way because right i mean self-sabotaging does not serve anybody it doesn't, it doesn't serve it doesn't. you it doesn't serve the people around you no. it doesn't serve your family so how do we get out of self-sabotage i think that's just we start with the awareness right and realizing yes. what we're doing we look at the patterns of behavior mm -hmm. that we've had the repetitive patterns of behavior right yes and we just say you know what i'm be the observer like why did i leave this relationship you know and maybe you did have valid reasons mm -hmm. and i'm not talking about just romantic relationships i'm talking about friendships too yeah why did i i cut the cord with this why do i not want to have connection with this person anymore and when we realize that you know we can get to the core root and sometimes it is that fear mm -hmm. and then the next step i would say is communicate yeah you know, let that person know hey this is how i'm feeling mm -hmm. and i think it may be something surfacing from my past or what have you and i just want to be honest with you because i do love you and i want to keep this relationship going yes so, communication um, is everything communication, yeah i love that you said the roots because once you can be self-aware and mm -hmm. figure out the root of whatever issue it is right Right. Then you can begin to heal that part of yourself. But if right. you are unaware right. of the root of it and you're still just scratching the surface at the symptoms and placing a Band-Aid here, placing a Band-Aid there, then you right. never really heal from that situation right. and you'll just keep attracting the same thing. Right. You have to learn, find the root, grow outside of the root so you can learn to attract different, right. a different situation because life will keep throwing the same toxic same bull crap thing. at you until you same learn your thing. lesson. Sometimes it's even procrastination is so sabotage. Yes. You know that you're supposed to be doing something, yes. you, you know, not believing in yourself 100%. You know, it's like you have to be focused on a, becoming a better, one. evolving That's a in big any one. way that you can. Self-sabotage. Procrastination right. is self-sabotage. <laughs> that equates to self-sabotage. Right. Who procrastinates sometimes? I do. Yeah. Right I here, procrastinate right sometimes, <laughs> usually. And when I can get to the root and figure out why I'm so I'm procrastinating is because I'm a perfectionist because I was, you know, by my adoptive family. I love my parents. Now I love daddy. Rest in peace. And I love my mom. She's my rock. Yes. But at the same time, they were so strict on schooling. I needed this done. It needed to get A's in school and best school, best school, best grades, best grades. So I learned to be a perfectionist because that's how I received love from my adopted parents. Right. 
So, I mean, now when I procrastinate, it's me self-sabotaging because I'm afraid of not being perfect in that project. Mm -hmm. And so I'll just keep looking away. I'm like, keep, (laughs) nah, I'm going to do this later. later. I'm going to do this a little bit later. No, I can't. It just... It's fear. Yeah. It's fear based. I don't know based. how to do it 100%, so mm-hmm. I'm just going to wait till the last minute. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But it's We've fear. all done it. Yes. We've all done it. Yes. But I think, you know, just focusing on the why and the root cause and then finding different strategies to, you know, fix the problem as yes. much as you can. What do you think is a good strategy to, to fix self-sabotaging? Yeah, to stop self-sabotaging. So awareness, right? Mm-hmm. And for me, to for me to get over my present my procrastinational ways. Is that a word? Procrastinational? <laughs> I don't know. I just made it a word. So I just, it is. For yeah, now. That's good. Um, so for, for me, today. it's I'm aware that I'm procrastinating. Mm-hmm. So now the awareness, number one, number two, I'm like, OK, all the things that I want to procrastinate on, I'm going to make myself do first. That part. I'm going that to part. get through this first because I realize what I'm trying to do and what my automatic reaction is, which I don't mm-hmm. want to do that. I need to get over this hump. So what I'll do is I'll just knock the things out at the first, first thing of the day. Yeah. Get it over with. And then once you feel that and you've grown above that and you don't have to worry about that anymore, you feel so much better. Right. It's like a weight is like, boop. You take the feelings and emotions out of it and you just start, you know, being proactive and getting it done. Yes. And then you can be proud of yourself. And then on top of that, you have more brain space because when you're fearful about something, and when you're procrastinating, Stress. you have about 20% that's covered in your brain. So you right. only have 80% to work with. You only have 80%, you know, right. creativity. Right. Until you address that procrastination thing that's hanging around in the back of your mind, like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Right, right. You're literally taking up brain space that you oh, could yeah. be using and dictating on other things to be more, you know, right. better at what you're doing. Well, and I would say wash your thoughts because we get so many mm-hmm. thoughts a day, all of us, no matter who you are, yes. now, how perfect you are, how not perfect you are. You get all these thoughts mm-hmm. up to, I think it's like 6,000 thoughts a day, over 6,000. And so those are repetitive. And so we have to recognize, okay, am I, I can self-sabotage myself with the thoughts that I think about myself mm-hmm. and the things I say to myself and the way that I treat myself. And so it's being aware of how you act yes. towards you. Do you love you? Right. You know, and- let me ask you, Nikki, <laughs> What did I tell you to do every single day? Oh, oh yes. She I did. just told her this like, what, last week, three weeks ago or something? Yeah. I was like, Nikki, you need to do this every day. What did I tell she you She said, do? look in the mirror, and I call it mirror talk. Look in the mirror and say, I am beautiful, love, powerful, all these wonderful things, all these attributes, and you just keep saying it on repeat every single day until you, because we were talking about raising your vibration, mm-hmm. which is where I was going to go next. It's like, it's such a nice little term that everybody throws around. Oh, raise your vibration, raise your, what is that? You know, what is what exactly raising is your that? vibration? Yeah. And so you mentioned that just starting your day with that type, you know, yeah, I meditate and do all those things, but am I affirming me? And it's interesting because I've shared this with clients. But I don't always do it. So it's so Mm -hmm. nice to have people in your life that remind you those nice little reminders, um, you know, that, hey, you got to do this. Check in with you. It works for people that have self-confidence issues, Mm -hmm. self-awareness, like um, not self-awareness, self-confidence. I mean, my self-esteem was completely shot after I got out of a horrible relationship about eight years ago. And it was completely shot. I felt like I was the ugliest, stupidest dumbest Mm -hmm. piece of crap in the whole entire world. And in order for me to bring myself and my self-love back, I had to stand in the mirror naked for every single morning for two years straight telling myself how awesome I was until I believed it. It -hmm. took me a while, but Mm -hmm. I ended up eventually believing it. Oh yeah. So that's one little hack, you guys. One little hack that you can do. It might, you might feel stupid in the beginning. You might feel dumb, but guess what? One day you're gonna be standing out in the mirror like, look at my body. <laughs> That's what I was doing. I was like, this hey girl, amazing. yes, you got this. <laughs> it's like, I was like, you look cute today. Oh, yes. I like those curls. I like this and that. You know? see, and then you start <laughs> believing it. It's a powerful oh, yeah. little thing that you can do that takes maybe three minutes in the morning. That's it. That's yeah, it. I think for me, it's like you know, I've had bouts of being super confident and then Mm -hmm. it's like oh you know go through something it's like oh am i really confident and but i'm you know turning 50 soon and the premenopause is all happened shout out to my girls that are going through (laughs) right now but (laughs) anyway so it's like your body's changing all these different changes and it's like okay who am i again you know Mm -hmm. and so it's like that rediscovery process Mm -hmm. and i had to tell myself that it doesn't have to be 
anything horrible. Yes. You know, I can embrace it and enjoy it. So mm-hmm. I'm going to start sharing more about going through premenopause because people don't really talk about it. No, it's just like, oh, it's horrible. You know, you can't get through it's it. Not, it should know, not be horrible. And it's Let like, me tell no. everybody right now. Let's just let's just throw that statement out the freaking window out. because it does not need to be horrible. <laughs> and I'm sorry, guys, if you're on here, just stick with us for a quick second. Yeah, Women, sorry, guys. your menopause, premenopause, after menopause, perimenopause, all this menopause stuff, mm-hmm. it does not need to be horrible. It can no. be beautiful and you do not have to feel different. Okay. Absolutely. You do not have to feel different. It's all about hormonal balance. That's what causes yes. the changes and get you to start checked. feeling <laughs> different. Right. So Go get your hormones checked. If you're Mm -hmm. starting to feel like something's coming on, like the menopause is is starting to come on, get your hormones checked and Mm -hmm. get your hormones in check. Right. And menopause will not be bad for you. I promise. It shouldn't be. Oh, no. I went to her doc and um, got my blood ran and everything like that. Got my hormones together. Mm -hmm. So... I'm so much better. Shout out to Life Gains. Shout out. (laughs) Shout out to Life Gains. (laughs) Um, Yeah. I mean, it doesn't have to be a bad thing. But you know what? There's just... So much negative conditioning, right? So much negative conditioning that we just get slapped with all day, Mm -hmm. every day from the Mm -hmm. media, from people who are walking reactions, I call them. They're just programs in the matrix, literally Mm -hmm. walking around zombies that don't ever have any type of conscious thought. They're just literally reacting to the stimulus on the outside of them, which is very sad. Um, but I mean, I guess it's just not for everybody in this life to be able to wake up to consciousness, which right. isn't okay because it's not for us to judge right. anybody for anything, right? That's a part of self sabotaging. That's true. That's if you true. immediately are judging somebody, uh, you might be self sabotaging yes. a beautiful relationship, right? With a friend, with a significant other. I mean, you're not happy with yourself. That's exactly you know? it. And it's so you just find a mirror. errors and things in others, you know, and point those out. And there's like, Dr. Joe Dispenza was saying this, and I know you've said it too. It's like there's an adrenaline rush that comes, yes. and we can get addicted to the same hormones of stress if we continue we the will. same type of reactions, That's the thing. right? We will so if get we addicted. We get excited to them. talking about people and slandering their name yes. and doing all this other stuff. Like we are, I mean, we can get attracted to that. We can be you know, addicted to that feeling and those hormones. What, is, what happens when we do that? Our chest get, at, reacts a certain way. Are we going to fight know, or flight? Our yeah. body's going to fight or flight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's like, you have to ask yourself. That's why I go back to being an observer of yourself. It's like, why am I so excited about tearing that person down? Mm-hmm. You know, let me pull back and let me just take the mirror yeah. and look at me. I'm yeah. looking back at myself Yes, and see what is it within me that's causing me to have joy and excitement about slandering somebody or making them feel bad or whatever. And it's, is it that I'm addicted to those hormones of being drama. negative? Drama. <laughs> yeah, drama. If you guys find you know? yourselves in a lot of drama a lot of the time, and I say this all the time, all the time, if you find yourself in drama, a lot of time you have to check yourself because you're probably addicted to your own stress hormones mm-hmm. and you're creating the drama in your life because it's more comfortable for you than no drama. Right. Which is something I went through. So I can speak right. from experience. Right. And I, I was full of drama been there. for a long time. Oh, yeah. But now. Drama magnet right here. Exactly. <laughs> and, you know, there's a little period between the drama life and then kind of go flowing into a very peaceful, calm life. Right. It might be a little bit boring here. You might feel a little bit like uptight and, oh God, what do I do now? Mm -hmm. But you have to be okay with those feelings because it is different. Mm -hmm. It is different. Your body is actually physiologically changing like because you have to stop yourself from the addiction of the stress hormones. Right. You have to let go of that toxic behavior. Yes. And you have to let your body be peaceful. And it's a different feeling. So it's scary. It's scary. It's new. But the more you do it, the better you feel. Exactly. You know, and you'll never go back. Right. Right. Or you limit your, you know, somebody calls you with something, you just kind of limit the amount of time that you would usually be on the phone or hanging Mm. out and, and, you know, doing that, just shift to something else. Exactly. Something lighter and brighter and fun. You know, these days we don't get back. And I always say today is a gift. And so if we just focus on today and you did this the other day too, I love spending (laughs) time with you because we're like driving down the street and you're like, focus on being present. And you're like, look at this, look at that or whatever. And so many times, and it really helped me because I'm like, yeah, how often do I let my thoughts kind of go, oh, yeah, start planning because I love to plan the future. Right. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, yeah, we got to be present. We got to focus on that. So we miss, we miss out so sometimes. much beauty. You guys, we, we miss so much beauty on the daily because right. we're busy thinking about the next thing, the, the last thing, right. the, the now the thing. thing. It's like it's <laughs> like we are missing. We are missing our lives because 
we are thinking about other things all the time. It's mm -hmm. like, look at the beauty that surrounds us that is real. The right. only real thing that we have is this moment of right now. Right. And we waste it thinking right. about past issues. Oh, oh my hurts, God, fears. that horrible fight. And I just hate guys and I, or right. I just hate women. And like, no, you're missing, all the same. <laughs> you're missing this beautiful moment of right now tripping exactly. over something that's not even real or present anymore. Right. That doesn't make any sense. Right. It doesn't make any sense. It's, it's gone. gone. Or it hasn't happened yet. If it's the future. Exactly. It hasn't even happened yet. So and us, if it is, if it is, you're manifesting your future. That part. So if you're thinking in your, your mind, if you, uh, this is <laughs> especially what I'm saying, well, this is what I'm saying. If you're out here and I used to be, so I, I always speak from experience guys and I'm not judging, right. but if you're out here, all men are dogs, all women are bees. Well, guess what? In your life, you're attracting all men who are dogs, dogs and all women who are bees. Right. So when I see people right on my on my posts, and then sometimes Billy and I will, will post a picture and they're like, oh my God, you guys are so gross and blah, blah, blah. Well, really? Jealous. Oh, she's going to cheat on you. She's going to leave you, Billy. You better be like all this bull crap, right? Okay. And, but that is the perception of that person. So when I see those comments, I'm like, wow, I feel so bad for that person. Right. Because what did they experience in their life right. to make them feel that every woman is a cheater or every woman is going to leave? Because right. that is their situation, not mine. Right. That has nothing to do with me. That right. has everything to do with that person. Right. Those. That's what judgments are, you guys. It right. has everything to do with you and nothing to do with the situation at hand when that you're judging part. somebody. Yeah, you have to be very careful with that because I, I was listening to a podcast and it said you have to be fascinated with what you want. Mm -hmm. So you and Billy, I feel like, are a power couple because you are doing it, right? You guys are in business together, in love together, raising a family together, all these things. Mm -hmm. And it's like you could have a lot of pressure on you to not be together, but you guys still make it work. And, you know, mm -hmm. so someone should look at your relationship and be admiring of that relationship and fascinated with what you guys are doing that they can apply to their own lives. Yes. So I just feel that people a lot of times are jealous and they're insecure. Is it going to happen for me? And so the best way for them to respond to that, which is not the best way, it's the worst way. It's the only way that they may know of is let me just slander. Let me say something negative. Let me say something mean to make them feel bad. It's just energy though. So when you it's are good at blocking energy, energy you're like, um, it's good yeah, energy. Go back. You know, <laughs> go what? Back there was a situation from. yesterday and you know, everybody goes through it. I had some real, like, it was only like two comments, but there were some real troll comments on a really fun. I mean, my husband and I posted some bomb ass pictures from yeah, our date that we had the other night. <laughs> it was nice. And people on there hating. And I'm like, I got mad. I, I did. I got sometimes I let myself get mad because you can't always like, oh, I'm so spiritual. I'm not going to address this and I'm yeah. not going to let myself get. No, angry I was angry. Yeah. I was angry and I let myself be angry and I understood Good. that I was angry. And then later when my anger kind of filtered away, I thought about it and I'm like, OK, so why were you so angry? I always go into that myself. Part. Mm -hmm. And figure out, is this about me? Is there something within me that needs to be addressed right. that caused me to be so angry about these comments? And I was thinking and thinking and thinking. But the more I thought about it, it's just it's really reminded me of how much healing the world needs to do, right. because I can never imagine myself going to anybody like you suck. You're yeah. ugly. You should right. be on OnlyFans. Oh my God! Has that like, kind of time on their hands. No. Please go do something. Productive. I just don't. Please. I just don't have it in me. <laughs> but you know what? I don't oh. think that maybe maybe me twenty years ago would have done the same thing and right. have judged the same way because bold, it was oh. it was you know it's unhealed stuff in here and it's unnecessary yeah it is unnecessary, unnecessary. but we're always going to have it see there's always yeah. one not everybody is going to like you and that is okay yeah not everybody likes me and that is okay or not me everybody likes you and that and is okay, with okay. That. and you have to I just like be me. okay with it i like me that's the only thing that matters <laughs> do you like you yes like you because if you the only time it does matter is if you don't like you mm -hmm. and you're so concerned about what somebody else thinks it's about thinking. you or whatever because their version of you may not be full of truth. They may, they may have some things, mm -hmm. you know, they may say, oh, she needs to work on this or that talking about myself, but they don't know everything. Yeah. They don't know what I'm doing over here. They exactly. don't know what you're doing over here. They don't know how hard you work. I yeah, have exactly. seen 
how you guys work together and how you guys work independently and you hustle all the time. Yes, we do. <laughs> you know, so that has to be admired, you know, from afar. Well, people don't see, people, people see the, the pretty things that yeah. is, that's put out there, they you know, so the they don't see the grind. The, the grind is boring. Right, right. <laughs> the grind is us sitting at our desk for eight hours right, right. <laughs> typing, <laughs> you, you know, it's not, it's not interesting. So, um, yeah, but, but yeah, time. I mean, you know, it's just, it took for me and this is for everybody to do. When you feel, find yourself reacting, reacting with, with a, in a big way to something, right. so you're triggered, or when you find yourself in judgment of another thing, person, or situation, go within yourself mm -hmm. and figure out, hey, why am I judging this situation? Why was I judging this lady for saying that I, I should be on OnlyFans? And I don't even knock it. Who cares? Do yeah. OnlyFans. If that's what you want to do, do right. you. Yes. Do you and do be proud of whatever it is that you want to do. Like, who cares? But right. I had to figure out, okay, this is probably from when I was getting bullied. Because mm -hmm. I, I I got bullied right. pretty okay. bad when I was in elementary school. And I was just, I, I, I just, I was, I got bullied. Yeah. My eyes looked like this. You know, I was different looking. So it's yeah. like, you know, I got bullied. And that reminded me of that judgment of mm -hmm. me and the bullying. So I was like, I went into myself and I'm like, you know what? This is not fifth grade. You are not being bullied right now. This lady is yeah, obviously something within herself is unhealed. If she wants to just spat off some negativity on this right. beautiful post that we have. And I forgive you, let you go. And I hope you heal because right. I was, I did respond. You did. Yeah. But then I deleted <laughs> it. <laughs> I deleted Sometimes it. Sometimes that's good though. That's therapy oh, in itself. It is. You, you write <laughs> it, it out and you get it out and then you're like, okay. I don't know how yes. many times I've done that, like with the text message. Mm -hmm. You know, like you write the text message. Oh, you write the whole text like, message out and okay, then you delete no, it all. Never mind. Never that's mind. That's a good okay. So let's talk about that. <laughs> Other ways to stop self-sabotaging. Yes. Write it down. Write it write down. a letter get to the out. person that you are angry at. Write mm -hmm. a letter, even if the person has passed away. You right. know, I had to write letters to my dad. My dad died when I was 19 years old and when he died, it, we were not in good terms. The last thing that we said to each other was a horrible. And so I had to let the anger go so right. I could forgive myself and forgive him. That's a good strategy. Yeah. yeah. You can even burn it. You know, exactly. I was just up. about to say that. Yeah. What I did is I wrote him letters and I went out at night and I burned it and I watched it just burn just and release. float away and release. So now when you think of him, what do you oh think? Oh my God. I, I, I utmost peace. respect peace and i have no guilt it was so oh, hard for me man. to let go of the guilt because the mm -hmm. last thing i said to him this is horrible the last thing i said to him he was screaming at me and he was like just yapping at me and i'm like you better stop screaming at me before you get a heart attack and die mm -hmm. and he's like i hate you and i'm like i hate you too that was literally the last conversation we had with each other mm -hmm. until he visited me which was like two weeks after he had passed over which he literally took chills now. <laughs> girl, he took my guilt away because I was I was mm. in a place where I probably would have took myself out, to be honest. I was in such a dark place after that situation because I was like, oh, my God, I, I, I my, my words killed him. This is how I felt at the time. My words killed him. Mm. And he didn't know how much I loved him because I said I hated him. That's the last word. And I refused to talk to him when he got sick, sick because mm. I didn't think he was going to die. Right. So imagine that guilt of what a person has to carry. I was 19 years old. Wow. I was not in a good mind state. I was full of trauma. I was doing drugs. I was not, I was doing real bad at the time. I was mm -hmm. literally in the basement of my best friend, rest in peace, TC. It's actually his birthday today. Oh, so shout happy out, birthday, happy, TC. um, wherever you're at, happy <laughs> wherever. birthday in this yes. life. Um, <laughs> but I was just, I couldn't even move, girl. I couldn't move. But he visited me. He came to my dreams. He visited me. And he was like, listen, he didn't even communicate with me like words. He put his hand on my shoulder. And I Aww. felt all of everything that he was thinking and saying. And he took all of that guilt from me and was like, so I right. love you. And I was like, I love you too, daddy. Aww. And he floated away. And I was like, daddy, don't leave me. Chills. <laughs> like, yes. No, it was I one of the most, that. it was the realest experience I've ever had in my life. That experience was realer than me and you sitting here talking today. Wow. I know it was him. Wow. He knew that if he did not visit me and take my guilt from me, that I would have took myself out. Wow. And so thank you, Dad. Thank, thank you, Dad. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for taking that away from me. So yes. it's forgiveness. Oh, forgiveness. Yes. That is another yourself thing. And others. Yes. yes. Forgiving yourself. Forgiveness creates peace within. It does. 
and letting go. And that's the part that's sometimes hard. You want to hold on to it because it does feel good sometimes yes. when you're in that toxic state to yes. feel mad and upset. And mm -hmm. you, you're justified, right? I've got all these reasons why I can feel this way. And sometimes, yes. guys, those <laughs> justifications are right. You do have a right to feel that way, but you get to choose. Mm -hmm. Do I want to stay with this? Because what comes with unforgiveness yes. is the heaviness of that emotion, mm -hmm. the energy of that emotion. Mm -hmm. And you can become toxic because you're carrying around all of this unforgiveness. Um, unforgiveness it creates yeah. bitterness resentment it does. it does that is low level low vibe that brings your vibration down, down. yes down carrying yes. all that stuff you got to let it go yes. you have to understand that life gives you what you are meant to have and if something goes away mm -hmm. then let it go yeah let it go because it was not meant for you on your path and with gratitude you can let it go with gratitude i because, always do yes yeah because yes. that person didn't have to be in your life so because they were, they're a part of your story and they're, they were supposed to be in your life. They're supposed yes, to be your dad, your friend, purpose, your whatever, a co worker, mm -hmm. you name it. And so since they are and have been, then receive that yes. as that. And remember the good times as much as you can. Absolutely. You know, focus on those because they're important too. Yeah. I think it's like, it brings a lot of peace to me to really, really know deeply and have the deep understanding that, that life is what it is you have to stay in flow right no resistance you know no resistance right. let things come towards you let things go let things flow to mm -hmm. you let things flow out and if you are like that then you really just life is just what it is and yes. there is no mistake there is no negative things that happen mm -hmm. there is no nobody leaving that's not supposed to go it's right. just like you have a deep understanding that hey this is my life and it is okay and your mm -hmm. perception upon your life is that there is no mistakes there's only lessons mm -hmm. and those lessons mm -hmm. are there to teach you something yes. in that moment in time that you needed to learn absolutely so you can go on to the next level that's the yes. part you don't have to stay stagnant no on that level and i remember courtney has always said this and i like it that shout out to courtney kane hey, sides hey, in the courtney. chat <laughs> um but that um the people that we've lost have mm -hmm. were our teachers yes you know and something you can say that's simple which i use a lot of times is thank you for being my teacher mm -hmm. you know and there's a whole it's called whole pono pono poem ah! i ho love pono pono. yes ho I, pono pono. I, I, I have that you. as a screensaver oh you do on my phone yes i love you i thank you i forgive, I forgive you, you. And I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah. I think it starts with, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. There yes. You go. That's what it is. Yeah. And I'm you sorry, do know I have, I have that on my phone, on the screen. When I'm feeling uptight and angry about something mm -hmm. or I'm feeling like I can't let something go, I'll put that on my phone screen so I can even not unconsciously glance at it right. throughout my day. Right. And yes, it's it so powerful. Really just it it just rolls it off. off. It yeah. does. And you can send it to somebody else. Mm -hmm. Like you can send Which that can. same prayer to somebody else. I'm sorry. I'm please sorry. forgive me. Thank you. Yes. I love you. I love you over and over again until oh, it pono, lifts. Pono. Yes. If you have, you know, some negative emotions. That gave me chills. It's everybody important. saying that everybody say ho upon Yeah. Out loud ho right ho now. Ho ho it gives you chills. Yes. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I, I love, love you. you. You can add names to it or not add names. Say or it to you. yourself. Say it to yourself. Say it to yourself. Say it to yourself. You know, we have so much to apologize to ourselves for, but we do. Do we say I love you? Mm. You know, I was doing a meditation class the other day and I asked my the people that attended, I said, hug yourself. Mm -hmm. I said, how often, when's the last time you hugged yourself? Mm -hmm. And everybody's looking around. There was a couple in the room and they're just like, Oh yeah, we hug each other, but we don't, I don't hug myself. Ourselves, right. So it's like that self-compassion and that self-love can yes. also help chip away at the self-sabotage too. Oh, it does. So. It does. And body love, right? I talk oh, about this yes. in my book, body love. So getting out the shower, when you put lotion on, mm -hmm. love on your body. I love you, arm. Love you bicep, you, arm. you tricep, you great bicep. We worked you out your today. Your forearm. <laughs> Look at you, pointer finger and middle finger and ring finger. Like you have mm -hmm. to love on mm -hmm. yourself. Our bodies don't Natural hear that enough girls, you know. our bodies don't hear that oh, enough yeah. i started talking to my hair i'm like it, oh, i love you i love you the curls the nap whatever <laughs> yeah let's go with it yeah so. i mean it's 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 deep and it does work that's another thing i had yes. to do during the time when i was trying to heal myself um when i was talking to myself naked in the mirror i was also getting out the shower and rubbing my body and telling my body how much i loved my body oh, yeah. i was just about to put this in the chat guys Hold oh, the upon upon. Upon. 
Yes. Oh yeah. It is a game changer. Yeah. And the doctor that made it, didn't he like heal so many people in a hospital or something like that? I was reading. Some I research think about so. Him. Yes. Yeah. So look it up. It's powerful. It is a powerful it statement. Is. It's a very, very powerful very statement. Powerful. Um, let's try to address one more thing. What else should we talk about real quick before we get out of here? That's um, important as far as self-sabotage goes. What is your biggest the biggest piece of advice that you would give to people that are self-sabotaging or how do you even become aware that you're self-sabotaging your thoughts? Mm -hmm. It's all in our thoughts, guys, like the repetition of our thoughts. And one exercise I've shared with clients before is take a piece of paper and just monitor your thoughts for like a week. If that's too long, fine. One day, <laughs> you know, 30 <laughs> minutes, you know, some, that's too long. It's overwhelming. I get it. Well, so, that's what meditation is for too. Guys. Right. Mm -hmm. So monitor your thoughts, write them down. You know, and then I want you to put like you can put past, present, future, and then like do check marks. You know, am I having thoughts mostly in the past, the present, the future, what have you? And what type of thoughts am I having? And I guarantee because research says we have 85 to 95 percent negative thoughts a day. That's everybody. It didn't say just mm -hmm. Nikki and Liz. It said everybody. So that's what our brains are doing. So we observe that that's what our brains are doing. We write that down and then we just start canceling those. It's like, okay, I'm not, I'm not thinking that anymore. I have thought this for all, 50 years. Mm -hmm. I've thought I'm not good enough for 50 years. So today I'm not, and I'm going to prove it to myself how I'm not good, how I am good enough. I'm going to go out and I'm going to do X, Y, Z. I'm going to go and I'm going to work out. I'm going to go and I'm going to eat right. I'm going to change my diet. I'm going to mm -hmm. go and I'm going to do something different with my hair. I'm going to go and I'm going to hang out with my friends. I'm going to go and I'm going to call somebody that I hadn't talked to in a long time. I'm going to reconnect. I'm going to meditate. So don't just look at it and say, oh, man, I'm thinking really bad all the time. But be aware and say, OK, I'm going to change this. I'm going to shift this mm -hmm. because those thoughts, a lot of times, the negative ones are so stressful. Yeah. And stress is killing us. It oh, almost well, you stress me. yourself it out. Literally almost we, me, so. we stress ourselves out. Why right. are you so stressed? Well, right. you stress yourself out. You're literally doing it to yeah. yourself all the time. Right. Stress is caused. <laughs> By our thoughts. Right. So yes, address your thoughts. Be aware of those. And then you may be in a relationship or with connected to somebody that's kind of contributing to that, right? So it's like you may be wanting to be more self-aware. You may be wanting to love yourself more or whatever, but you have somebody in your ear that's saying negative things to you mm -hmm. and kind of playing into that and pouring into the way you feel already, yes. which is toxic too. Yes. So it's if you, you know, cannot remove yourself from that relationship right away, then you just have to tune up yourself by consistently saying more positive things a hundred percent of the time, you know, yes. just, it's almost think of it like reps, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, I'm going to continue working this muscle of positivity and encouraging myself and nobody's perfect. Even if you have made mistakes or what have you do little things mm -hmm. to start changing and becoming better and stronger yes. so that you can feel confident. Mm -hmm. And so when you have those self-sabotage thoughts, you can say, Oh no, that's how I used to be. I'm mm -hmm. not, I'm not thinking that I'm not feeling that way anymore. I'm Awareness. Feel this. Yes. Yeah. Awareness so. is key. Yeah. Awareness is key right. in this guys. Um, my piece of advice for people when they're feeling icky inside right. is to get present always, always, yes, always, always. So, so, so what I do when I'm full of emotion, that is quote unquote negative. Mm -hmm. um, I don't find emotion to be negative. I just think it is emotion. It just is. You Emotions say, just feel it. are. You feel it. You can't they just it. are. Exactly. Emotions mm -hmm. just are, guys. There is no really negative emotion. Anger is not a negative emotion. It's right. just showing you something that you need to see. So right. it's like, don't, don't stop diminishing our emotions. Let's mm -hmm. feel our emotions. That's number one. I go into my body. Where am I feeling this emotion? Oh, I feel this emotion right here. My anger. Okay. This is anger. It's pulsating. What else is it doing? It's radiating. Mm -hmm. What else is it doing? When did it start? Is it going to stop? I just put awareness, put awareness in your body where you are feeling it. And That's then good. realize, I take a deep that. breath. <sighs> Maybe try to therapy yourself and get to the root of that issue. But if mm -hmm. you're not feeling that at that time, then just look around. Right. Look around look and look tree. at look things at that are beautiful because that will take you out of stress. Go right. into your body, pay attention to it. That will dissipate the emotion Absolutely. and it will bring you down to the point where you can pay attention to the trees and look at the flowers and look at the little right. birdie over there chirping and look at, you know, you can, right. you can figure out things to be grateful for. Be grateful. When you're grateful, grateful, your brain releases oxytocin and what does oxytocin do it stops mm -hmm. cortisol adrenaline all of the stress hormones 
Right. It brings them down. So when your oxytocin goes up, your stress goes down. Yeah. So figure out ways how to enhance your oxytocin. I say go look at your dog in the eye. Mm -hmm. Go pet your animals. Go children, give your yeah. you know, go give your, your kid bone. a hug. <laughs> yes, go give your husband or wife a hug. Mm -hmm. Get some oxytocin going, some appreciation, some Absolutely. gratefulness, and that will lower your stress. It is proven. Absolutely. It's proven. Absolutely. Yes. And go towards the fear because a lot of times we mm -hmm. have fear Don't run away and from we the fear. run, yes. you know, so it's like go towards it. Be, be present in mm -hmm. the relationship and the friendship and yes. communicate and let them know what's going on. So. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, good. It is good. Okay, guys, we had an exciting mm -hmm. announcement today. We launched the Arsht Center tickets for the awards. Yay. The Conscious Awards 2024, August 4th in Miami at the Arsht Center are live on the website, you guys. So we're just going to play get this. We played at the beginning. Get your tickets. Um, it's going to be amazing this year. So. Hey everyone, I'm Elizabeth Carson and I'm thrilled to introduce to you an extraordinary weekend event happening right here in Miami, Florida on August 3rd and 4th. It's none other than the second annual Forbidden Conscious Awards weekend. After the tremendous success of last year's event with over 1,200 attendees from around the globe, we knew we had to make this year's event even more spectacular. On Saturday, we have a captivating conference lined up featuring world-renowned speakers such as Muhammad Ibrahim, Merkaba 13, Robert Grant, Billy Carson, and a woman's panel hosted by yours truly. Following the conference, we'll set sail for a VIP yacht cruise at sunset, where you'll have the chance to mingle with your favorite nominees and celebrity guests, all hosted by 19 Keys. Sunday, August 4th, kicks off with a Forbidden Knowledge book publishing signing event, followed by the highly anticipated second annual Forbidden Conscious Awards. This is a red carpet affair, so come dressed to impress. Remember last year, we surprised a lucky guest with an Audi A4 during the awards, and this year, we're upping the ante with a chance to win a Mercedes Benz. So make sure you secure your tickets early. This event is sure to sell out quickly. I cannot wait to see each and every one of you there for what promises to be an unforgettable weekend of education, inspiration, celebration, and glamour. Glamour, guys. It is glamour. a black tie affair. Black tie affair, you guys. Yes. I think it's super fun because we don't really get very many opportunities to dress our best in gowns yes. and, and tuxedos. So this is really an opportunity for us to come out, dress up, right. feel nice, look nice, the shake energy, hands with the best of them. It's the energy for me, guys. Mm -hmm. Like if you attended last year, just fire up the chat with it because it literally, everybody I talked to, I was interviewing people on the red carpet, but every single person was like, I, I've never felt this kind of energy. Like it was so electrifying. Oh, yeah. And I really believe this because it was the first. Oh, yeah. You know, you guys were literally birthing the Conscious Award. We did. In the world. We, we know did. the only one. So yes. you have to be here if you didn't get a chance to come last year or if you did, come back. Yes. It's yes. going to be better. Come back. Visit that link, you guys. That link, I dropped that yes. link that goes to the Arch Center for the actual awards. So that will get you tickets into the award show. If you guys want to join us on the VIP Yacht Cruise or you yes. want to come to the conference and learn some stuff, then visit this link. I'm going to drop it right here. Sign up. We have the conference tickets and the VIP Yacht Cruise tickets available. Yes. We have Giorgio Sukulos from Ancient Aliens that will be the host of the actual oh, yes. award That's show. So right. The, the VIP Yacht Party is going to be hosted by 19 Keys and we'll have all of our celebrity invited guests yes. and all of the nominees. Make sure you guys vote. We will be tallying votes here coming up pretty really soon, you guys. Soon. So get your votes in. And yeah, I mean, vendors, thanks. Vendor tables too. Oh yeah, and vendors and sponsors. Yes. Contact me. Yes, get your Contact. business out there, guys. This is a perfect place to do it because oh, yeah. there'll be thousands of people there. So if you're a business owner or you want, you know, want to sponsor. Or you guys want to sponsor yeah, this event. We, we would expect, love that. We expect over 1,500 people from all over the world, yeah. guys. So if you guys are interested in sponsorship or getting a vendor table, then email business at forbidden knowledge with the number yes. four dot com and we will set it up for you. But thank you so much, everybody, for thank joining you. us today. We appreciate you so much. Make sure you guys yes. hit that like button and, and share, share, share. I hope that everyone got a little bit of value out of today. Yes. And it's always a pleasure being 
live with my girl nikki speaks um every time it. you're here we're about to do a live you guys so you guys yes. are gonna see her much more and yeah yes. nikki's on our team she is yes. on the forbidden knowledge team so she is one of the people behind the scenes working their tails off to make our company grow expand so we can end up helping more people which is the goal okay yeah and i just i just appreciate you guys so much because i was really stressed mm -hmm. you know just dealing with <laughs> psychotherapy and everything like that oh, and yeah. so just being able to work with you all and this capacity has been amazing first of all you guys are my friends but um but it you know it's even bigger than that you yes. know for me i love being a part of a movement and mm -hmm. i love being a part of birthing oh things. we're definitely a movement you we are oh like, yeah we literally are and so yes. it's so exciting every time i'm around you guys or mm -hmm. just see what you're doing on social media it's just like man you know just to be in that energy is like freaking amazing. So get here. They're, they're some of the nicest people. You know, I know that you may think, oh, I don't know what to say to them. They're celebrities. <laughs> they're like so down to earth. Like this girl is hilarious. Like <laughs> she is my sister. Okay. Yeah. Like totally. So <laughs> get this thing. I know. I love you, Nikki. Thank love you so you much. I appreciate you. Thank everyone in the chat. Thank I love you all you guys. And yeah. Oh, make sure you guys join tomorrow for Courtney Kane Sides podcast starting yes. at 730 Eastern. OK, make sure you guys pop back in for Courtney Kane Sides podcast 730 tomorrow. And then Matthew LaCroix and Billy Carson will be live at 835 tomorrow. tomorrow OK, talking all about all different ancient of stuff, stuff. <laughs> aliens and stuff like <laughs> I mean <laughs> yeah they actually are so yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right <laughs> so they will be so yeah <laughs> come back tomorrow guys we're our network is full of shows we're almost at a million subscribers on Woo! this channel so round yes. of applause for all More of us to come. <laughs> love you guys all right love you guys. peace peace everybody have a great I don't even know what day it is but have a good week Tuesday, <laughs> Tuesday. okay <laughs> oh Tuesday all right <laughs> peace 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 and love bye